Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about transforming linear equations. So we're going to take linear equations and do some various transformations that we've already learned about, but this time to an actual line. So we've previously done transformations with points and with shapes, and now we're going to add into that an actual line equation and how we can transform that. The first one, we're going to just walk through the different types of transformations that you need to know how to do with linear equations. And so I'm just going to walk you through each one and kind of give you the highlights of what would change for each type of transformation. Okay, the first one that you may be asked to do uh, for a linear equation would be a dilation through the origin. And what I mean through the origin is the y-intercept is zero. And here's a visual example of it. So notice how our y-intercept is zero right at the origin. Okay, so in order for this first um, rule, if you will, to apply, the y-intercept would have to be zero. Okay, and the way that would look in an equation, here's an example. Um, f of x, and f of x of course just means y, um, y equals 4 times x, right? 4 would be our slope, and then there's an understood plus 0 right here, which represents um, the y-intercept being 0, okay? Um, so what would happen if you dilated through the origin? Now it doesn't matter what I dilate by, right? I could dilate by 2, one half, four, it doesn't matter. Um, no matter what you're dilating by, the slope and the y-intercept do not change. So if I wanted to take this line and dilate it by anything, I would have the exact same line because I wouldn't change my slope. My slope would still be four and I wouldn't change the y-intercept. It would still be zero. So essentially what would happen is if I tried to graph a dilated version of this, it would just fall along the exact same line. The points would just kind of stretch out. Um, so no change there. Okay, let's look at what if you had a dilation not through the origin. So this time our little uh, y-intercept is not going to be zero, kind of like this one. So notice this one, zero is there, our y-intercept is down here at negative one. So what would happen then? The slope is not going to change. You would keep your slope the exact same, okay? Then you're going to multiply the y-intercept by a scale factor, okay? Whatever the scale factor is. So notice it didn't say dilation by what? Could be by anything. Again, it could be by one half, one third. Could be by two, by five, by three, whatever the scale factor is. Okay, my slope would stay the same, and I would multiply the y intercept by the scale factor. So here's an example f of x equals 2x minus 1, and that's this line that we've got graphed right here. So let me, mul let me dilate this equation by a scale factor of 2, and I'm going to follow these two rules right here. So here we get for my new one, f of x, my slope does not change. So the 2x just comes down. All right, but I'm going to multiply this b value, the y-intercept, by the scale factor of 2. So what is negative 1 times 2? Negative 2. So this is my new transformed equation when I do a dilation of two. And let me plot that one just so we can see how it would look different. And I'm gonna use a different color. Okay, so notice that when I plotted the blue line, the new dilated equation, it pulled down a little bit. It stretched down. Our y-intercept moved down one. Just something to note. Okay, our next type of uh, transformation of linear equations that we're going to look at is a reflection over the y-axis. So I put a little reminder here of that rule which we talked about in our reflections video. The rule is xy becomes 
negative x, y, um, if you need a little reminder of that rule. What happens when I take an equation like this one, f of x equals 3x plus 1, just a random example I came up with of a linear equation. Here is it graphed, okay? Um, what happens if I wanted to reflect that line over the y-axis? So a great way to think about this is my line is currently here. Right? I'm just going to overlay my pin there. Okay, I want to reflect it over the y-axis. So I'm going to keep my y-intercept the same. I'm just going to reflect it um, across the y-axis. So think about what would happen here. My slope is going to flip sign because I went from a positive slope to now I'm going to have a negative slope. Okay, the y-intercept is not going to change. Remember, that was kind of my my stationary point, I keep my pin on the y-intercept and I just reflected it over the y-axis. So let's think about how that would look in this equation. My slope is going to flip signs. So the new one is going to be negative 3x. And then the y-intercept does not change. It was plus 1 before. It's going to stay plus 1. So let's go ahead and graph this line just to make sure it does look like it's reflected over the y-axis. And I'm going to use a different color. Okay, so see how that turquoise line, how it's mirrored over the y-axis. All right, so let's move on. Let's try a reflection over the x-axis. And I put a little reminder here of that rule um, for reflections over the x-axis. We currently have this line f of x equals x plus 2. And this is uh, that equation graphed right now. Um, so let's just think about it. If my pen is laying here, right, over that line, and we wanted to reflect over the x-axis, okay? So this time, instead of me keeping my pen um, on the y-intercept and kind of rotating, I'm going to keep my finger or my pen on the x-intercept, and then we're going to rotate from that point. Okay, so let's think about what would happen here. My slope would definitely flip, right, because it was a positive, and now it's turned into a negative slope. Um, same number, the sign is just going to flip. And then the y-intercept is also going to flip. Notice up here, my y-intercept was at a positive 2, and now it's going to be down here in the negatives, and it's actually going to fall directly at negative 2. Let's see how that would look in an equation. I would have f of x equals, my slope is going to change signs. This right now it's a positive 1, so we're going to make it a negative 1x. And then the y-intercept is a positive 2, so we're going to make it a negative 2. Now let's graph that one in a different color to see how it looks. Okay, so notice how with the new purple line, we kept the same x-intercept, our y-intercept flip sign, and our slope also flipped our sign. The last type of transformation we're going to talk about in this video is a vertical shift. It's essentially that we are going to translate either up or down. We are not going to cover translating horizontally in this video. We're just going to talk about moving up or down. Um, and we call that a vertical shift. So let's think about this example that I've given. Here's an equation which I've already graphed over here. Okay. And we want to shift it four units up. 
I want to literally take this line and shift it one, two, three, four units upwards and see what happens. Um, so looking at my rules, I know that my slope is not going to change. Okay, it's a negative slope right now. It's going to stay a negative slope if I just shift it up. And the y-intercept will be added by moving up, if that is what we're doing, or subtracted by moving down by the shift amount. So in this case, we've been given the equation and it says shift four units up. So that means we're going to add four to the current y-intercept. Okay, so we're going to go from f of x to, okay, so our slope does not change. It's going to stay negative 3x. And then we're going to add four to that one. So one plus four is positive five. So let's graph this over here and see how that will look. Okay, so notice that we just shifted the line up four units. The slope stayed the same, so we really have created two parallel lines. Those lines will never intersect, okay? I want you guys to try now. Reflect this line, f of x equals 2x minus 2, over the x-axis. You may want to go back to that page and really review how do we reflect over an x-axis. I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.